Hello everyone, and welcome to Up and Running, playing with Power NTG's deck tech series that helps you get up and running with a new deck as soon as possible. This series will teach you how to pilot the deck, main win cons, strengths and weaknesses, key card choices, mulligans, what to watch out for, and how to stop it if you're against it. Today's Up and Running is brought to you by TCGPlayer.com, where you can find all of your cards online while still supporting local game stores, Dragon Shield for all the best accessories to protect your decks, and through Patreon, where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. Today's deck is Blood Pod. This deck is piloted by the four color pairing of Tim to the Weaver and Tana the Blood Sower. This deck seeks to disrupt your opponents with stacks pieces and win with a Birthing Pod combo or via mid-range creatures. So let's dive right in. This deck is a disruptive deck, meaning this deck seeks to achieve board control and aims to disrupt opponents before going for its win. This deck plays a high density of threats, meaning every card you play is a force to be reckoned with. This deck is also very disruptive, seeking to put your opponents off balance and deal with problems while you pull ahead. This deck also seeks to achieve big board presence, which is something that is harder to deal with in the CEDH meta, which is mostly full of targeted removal versus mass removal. This deck lacks blue, so it lacks one of the most powerful effects in CEDH, which is efficient stack interaction. This deck also seeks to achieve a big board presence, so any deck that does pack board wipes is going to set this deck back. You will like this deck if you enjoy attacking with creatures, playing with and around stacks, and playing big threats not normally seen in CEDH. But before we go any further, let's talk about our commanders, Timna and Tana. Timna the Weaver and Tana the Blood Sower are both commanders that have partner. Timna is one, a white and a black for a 2-2 legendary human cleric with lifelink that reads, at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you may pay X life, where X is the number of opponents that were dealt combat damage this turn. If you do, draw X cards. Tana the Blood Sower is 2, a red, and a green for a 2-2 legendary elf druid with trample that reads, Whenever Tana the Blood Sower deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1-1 green sapperling creature tokens. The main strategy of this deck is to disrupt the board early, exhaust or restrict your opponent's resources, and then win by attacking with large threats or enacting your combo finish. You want to lay down early disruption in the forms of turning off creatures, turning off artifacts, restrictions on casting spells, and slowing down your opponents. Make sure to leverage each of your commanders to pull ahead in both card advantage and board presence. When your opponent's resources are exhausted, that's when you start taking players out of the game with big threats or by comboing off for the win. While attacking is perfectly acceptable to win the game through multiple large threats, there are also combos you can use to finish off the game all at once. That is achieved through the namesake of this deck, Birthing Pod. The main combo of this deck leverages Birthing Pod, which will pod greater and greater creatures to enact an infinite combo. You need 3 mana, 6 life, Birthing Pod, and a 3 CMC creature to start. Interestingly enough, Tim to the Weaver is 3 CMC. Activate Birthing Pod, sacrificing your creature. You fetch up Felidar Guardian onto the battlefield. Felidar triggers, flickering Birthing Pod back onto the battlefield untapped. Activate Birthing Pod again, sacrificing Felidar Guardian, and fetch up Karmic Guide onto the battlefield. Karmic enters and returns Felidar Guardian back onto the battlefield from the graveyard. Felidar triggers again, and you flicker Birthing Pod again. Activate Birthing Pod again, sacking Felidar again, this time fetching up Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker onto the battlefield. Now, activate Kiki Jiki, making a copy of Karmic Guide. It will enter, its ability will trigger, and you will bring back Felidar Guardian again. Felidar enters, and this time it will flicker Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki will enter untapped. Then you can tap Kiki, make a copy of Felidar, and then flicker Kiki to repeat this for infinite Felidar Guardian tokens with haste. Then you attack for the win. Another secondary line available in this deck uses Survival of the Fittest. This combo requires survival on the battlefield, a creature in hand, 3 green mana, 2 white mana, and 3 other generic mana. Activate Survival of the Fittest, discarding your first creature. Search up Felidar Guardian. Activate Survival, discarding Felidar Guardian, and fetch up Kiki Jiki. Activate Survival, discarding Kiki Jiki, and fetch up Karmic Guide. Cast Karmic Guide. It will enter, and you will reanimate Kiki Jiki. Activate Kiki Jiki, make it a copy of Karmic Guide. This will reanimate Felidar Guardian. It will enter, and you will flicker Kiki Jiki. Then you can repeat the same process as before. The MVP of this deck is Blood Moon. CEDH thrives on greedy mana bases, especially in a world that runs rampant with Tainted Pact. Three, four, and five color decks are very common, and this one enchantment completely shuts everyone down. This card and its brother, Magus of the Moon, allow you to stifle your opponents from casting many spells and creating a stall in the game from multicolored decks. 
So how do you pilot this deck? As a general rule for Blood Pot, you'll want to know which stacks pieces are good against the deck you're playing against. Do you have a lot of storm-based decks, or decks that seek to cast multiple spells per turn? Shut them down with multiple rule of law effects. Do your opponents rely heavily on artifacts? Throw down null rod effects to shut them off. Once you know what you're playing against, you can take that information when considering mulligans, tutor targets, and which stacks pieces to prioritize. So what does an ideal opening hand look like? You'll want to keep hands that consist of some good stacks pieces and some sort of ramp. You'll almost always want to mulligan away an opening hand containing Kiki Jiki or Karmic Guide in your hand. Thelidar is okay as it can be used as a value you play mid game and then get your combo going later on. In the early game, seek to establish your board presence. This is either in the form of dorks like Llanowar Elves or Birds of Paradise, or in the form of early stacks pieces like Draneth Magistrate, Trinisphere, or Deafening Silence. Any early card advantage is also key as well, including things like Sylvan Library, Dark Confidant, or even your commander, Timna. Once in the mid game, you'll want to apply your mid range threats and mid range stacks pieces. This includes cards like Linvala, Keeper of Silence, and Stranglehold. Late game is where this deck was built to shine. This deck grinds out value in the late game better than most CEDH decks, and your opponents will not be able to keep up. Apply big game ending threats like Archon of Valor's Reach. Elder Gargaroth, or Inferno Titan. Seek to close the game with these big creatures or go for your Birthing Pod line for the win. Now that you know the main components of the deck, let's quickly go over the rest. This deck runs plenty of acceleration in the form of Mana Dorks. Cards like Arbor Elf, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Birds of Paradise, Deathrite Shaman, Elves of Deep Shadow, Elvish Mystic, Finehorn Elves, Llanowar Elves, and Bloom Tinder all help us ramp. We also have a few artifact ramp cards like Mana Crypt, Mox Diamond, and Soul Ring. We also run Carpet of Flowers and Wild Growth for additional ramp. We have a suite of hate bears including Collector Oof, Draneth Magistrate, Thalia Guardian of Thraben, Archon of Emeria, Avon Mind Sensor, and Magus of the Moon. Our stacks package includes Tanglewire, Trinisphere, Null Rod, Deafening Silence, Root Maze, Aura of Silence, Blood Moon, Leyline of the Void, and Stranglehold. We have a suite of removal and interaction in the form of Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, Veil of Summer, Abrupt Decay, Assassin's Trophy, Zealous Persecution, Fire Covenant, Deflecting Swat, and Force of Vigor. We have multiple tutors in the deck, including Imperial Seal, Demonic Tutor, Diabolic Intent, Finale of Devastation, Eldritch Evolution, Vampiric Tutor, and Eladomri's Call. Our draw engines consist of OK Adversary, Dark Confidant, and Sylvan Library. Our game closers consist of a number of bigger threats like Linvala Keeper of Silence, Sire of Insanity, Elshnorn Grand Cenobite, and Inferno Titan. Finally, we have a number of utilities built into the deck for resilience and additional value, like Loyal Apprentice, Destiny Spinner, Query and Ranger, Yeast on the Wanderer Bard, Goblin Sharpshooter, Necromancy, Splinter Twin, and Dockside Extortionist. Our lands include a full suite of fetches, duels, shocks, rainbow lands, value lands, and basics to round out the package. Make sure you are consistently fetching for basic lands in the deck for when you seek to land your Blood Moon. One last thing we wanted to mention is that you should always swap out the appropriate cards for the appropriate meta you are playing in. There are a ton of sideboard cards not mentioned here, but the primer gives a ton of examples of what you can swap in depending upon what you're up against. So now you know how the deck works, so what should you watch out for? Also, if you are against this deck, what should you use to stop it? This deck relies on creatures, so any kind of board wipes usually slow the deck down. This includes cards like Toxic Deluge, Cyclonic Rift, Pyroclasm Effects, and Massacre. Our main combo requires ETB triggers of creatures to take effect, so anything shutting those down hurts us as well. Torpor Orb, Hushwing Griff, and Tokatli Honor Guard all prevent us from comboing off. When we go off, we usually have to search, so cards like Stranglehold, Ashiok Dream Render, and Avon Mind Sensor all stop our plans. Graft Digger's Cage stops our combo by preventing cards from entering the battlefield from graveyards or libraries. We highly recommend you check out the primer on this deck listed in the description below. We also recommend a number of gameplay videos to see it in action. Links are also in the description. You can also check out the Discord channel in this description where you can discuss this deck further. A big thanks to the curators of this deck for piloting, testing, and creating the primer. What do you think about this deck? What deck would you like to see next? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider supporting us on Patreon. You'll receive all kinds of benefits for your direct support. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.